Hi guys, good morning. This is your Sir Kevin and for today in our accounting tutorial, we're going to talk about non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operation, IFRS 5. So, without further ado, let's start. Unang-una, assets held for sale are assets that cease to be used in the ordinary course of business. These assets are committed for immediate disposal. So, this is not a standard definition, pero more or less, it defines the nature of an asset held for sale. Na hindi na siya ginagamit in the ordinary course of business and it is already for immediate disposal. So, remember those two things. In short, they are things that we are now holding for sale, no longer using and holding for sale. In other words, ang assets held for sale po ay ang mga bagay-bagay na Minsang iningatan pero kailangan ng bitawan. Oh no! <laughs> Next. Ay, sorry. I inserted the wrong photos. Sorry, sorry. Wala yan, wala. Next. So, as it held for sale. Next is a disposal group. Ang disposal group is simply also held for sale, ano? Pero it is a group of assets and liabilities, possibly an operating segment or a branch, which an entity intends to dispose in a single transaction. So remember that, uh, asset held for sale, disposal group. Magkapareho lang to sila, except that a disposal group is a whole branch. It is a whole operating segment. Like if you have a branch in a separate geographic location and you're no longer selling well in that location, so you decided to discontinue operation there, that particular branch may be classified as a disposal group. Okay, which will be covered by IFRS 5. So, yun nga, group of assets, disposal group. So now, IFRS 5. When do we say that an asset is classified as held for sale according to IFRS 5? To be classified as held for sale, an asset must qualify under the following conditions. Una, Committed plan to sale. So, this one we really need to make sure of kasi may iba dyan na sinasabi lang na committed pero alam naman natin na ginagawa. Ano? So, yun nga. Umayos kayo guys ha? So, yun. Committed plan to sale. Available for immediate sale. Actively locating a buyer. The sale is highly probable within 12 months. Actively marketed for sale at a reasonable price. And change on plan to sell is unlikely. So, wala nang atrasan. Uh, isa lang ang tema ng, ng conditions na to, no? Meaning, we are really not using the asset anymore. It is only for sale. And that we are looking for a buyer. And that there is no turning back. And we expect the sale to happen shortly, within 12 months. So, held for sale, IFRS 5. Assets na ganito ang classification should be held for sale. And... What does IFRS 5 say about presentation and measurement of these assets? Ito po. Immediately before the initial classification of the asset as held for sale, the carrying amount of the asset will be measured in accordance with applicable IFRS. So, in order to, in order to explain this better, think about it like this. Ano? You had a building. Ginamit mo siya as an office building for so many years. Pero this year, you're no longer using it, inabandon mo na kasi nagpagawa ka na ng bagong building. Nag-transfer ka na into a new location. The old building is abandoned. So it is now being offered to several buyers. Ano? So ang gagawin po natin dito is, before we can classify it as held for sale, we must first measure it under past 16 for depreciation and past 36 for impairment. So in short, ang ginagawa po sa initial measurement ng held for sale is, Step 1, you need to update the asset first. Ang asset is ina-update muna using its old standard and then it transfer to held for sale with the new standard now being IFRS 5. So for a PPE item, depreciate and test for impairment. Then after that, you reclassify to held for sale. So parang two step po ang nangyayari sa initial measurement natin. Next, after it is initially measured, 
in a subsequent period. For example, nag-remeasure ka, nag-reclassify ka November, ano? Up to December 31, hindi pa siya nabenta. In the December 31 financial statement, you will present the held for sale asset at uh, non-current assets or disposal group that are classified as held for sale shall be measured at the lower of carrying amount or fair value less cost to sell. So, remember in the first measurement, in the initial measurement, i depreciate mo and then you tested for impairment. You actually already have a basis of carrying amount there. Your initial measurement would be your carrying amount. Pagdating ng subsequent period, you will compare that carrying amount versus a fair value less cost to sell in that subsequent period. And then whichever is lower between the two of them, yun po ang magiging presentation value ng asset held for sale natin. Now question, sir what if the fair value less cost to sell is lower than the carrying amount? Uh, kapag lower ang fair value less cost to sell from the carrying amount, there will be an impairment loss that will be recognized. We'll talk about impairment soon. So more on subsequent measurement. Remember this. Non-current asset or disposal group that are classified as held for sale are not depreciated. So from the time na na-classify mo siya as held for sale, no depreciation will be recorded from that asset anymore. Okay, that is a cardinal rule on held for sale. Now let's talk about impairment. There are two instances where you can record impairment loss for assets held for sale. The first one is at the time of classification as held for sale. Remember earlier, in apply mo yung past 36, pwede magkaroon ng impairment loss. And next is after classification as held for sale. Uh, so to shorten this, ano, the first one is based on past 36. The second one is the comparison of carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell. So, immediately prior to classification as an asset or disposal group, as a held for sale, impairment is measured and recognized in accordance with I, ano, in accordance with applicable IFRS. Past 16 and past 36. Pero after classification, the impairment loss will be calculated based on the difference between the adjusted carrying amounts of the asset or disposal group and the fair value less cost to sell. So this is a provision on IFRS 5 na. I-compare mo daw si carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell. If there is a difference, a decrease, then you will record impairment loss. Okay? Uh, we'll, we'll do that in an illustration soon. Now let's go to discontinued operation. A discontinued operation is a component of an entity that either has been disposed of or is classified as held for sale. The sum of the post-tax profit or loss of the discontinued operation is presented as a single amount on the face of the statement of comprehensive income. In short, wala kang naintindihan. Ay. Okay, let me simplify. This continued operation po, it is a branch na sabihin na lang natin isang disposal group. Ano? So for example, ang isang branch na to, pinapasara mo na kasi ibibenta mo na. Ang gagawin mo dyan is hindi mo yan isasara immediately. Meron pang mangyayaring clearance sale dyan. Uh, going out of business sale. So itong mga binibenta dito, most probably ito yung mga unsold inventory, sometimes ibibenta ng furniture, sometimes ibibenta na in the process na talaga on selling the branch. So what you would have there is kapag ongoing yung sales, you will then realize some revenues from it. Kasi nagkiklearance sale ka. So there will be revenues from that. Also related to those sales, meron kang babayaran na tao para mag-facilitate ng selling. You will incur expenses. You will incur storage fees. You will incur other related expenditures para maibenta mo ang mga assets na natitira dun sa branch. Okay? So what, what is the concern of IFRS 5 on those revenues and expenses? Sabi, those revenues and expenses should be presented separately as a single amount on the face of the statement of comprehensive income. They will be presented as 
loss from discontinued operation or income from discontinued operation depending on the result of the sales of course so yon summary of the topic non current assets held for sale they are current assets disposal groups as well are treated as current asset discontinued operation naman we are concerned here about the income or loss from discontinued operation so let's head to illustrations para mas maklarify pa natin in what we are imagining about these things.